Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another audio edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. This time, it's an apology, an open rant and an open apology at the same time. You see, a couple of videos ago, I, I don't know this precise date, but many, many videos ago, I did sort of a mini discussion on the concept of a US adaptation of Death Note and a video defending the adaptation for Ghost in the Shell. Well, keep in mind, I didn't know the end result back then, but I do now, and I kind of want to apologize. Actually, not for the reasons that you're thinking of. Like, I, I stand by my statements. It's just sort of an open essay, an open rant, if you will. I'm not really apologizing. You know, I, I, I like what I like, and I do what I think people want to see or hear or, or whatever but yeah back then i didn't know the end result for those movies and boy oh boy uh, let's start with the death note movie when that thing was first announced i really thought they were going to take the concept and bring it over here with sort of like an alternate take like what if the notebook fell over here instead of japan and we had a new host uh, or a new um, user I should say for the uh, death note that's not what we got instead they took the core elements and simplified them it felt like I was watching great value death note instead of reading the manga or watching the anime adaptation now keep in mind there have been so many adaptations of the death note manga that it is kind of exhausting you know, there's like five live action movies. I think there's a live action TV series. There's a play, I think. There's also the anime. And now you've got the uh, Netflix US version, which, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, I don't really think you should go out of your way to adapt every single anime property out there. But this was a series which catered to Western audiences heavily and you could have done a good job instead like i mentioned earlier instead of going with the alternate route which i think would have been best you went and took the character of light and just uh did a bastardized version of the character and took away the core essential element which is his methodical genius intellect and the way he went about things in, in, and instead you just gave us a punk character with a weird i don't know it, it was just a, a, an odd vendetta against society and it felt like mr robot but without the tech and smarts and wit and just a, a punkish foul-mouthed version of light that i did not appreciate that cat and mouse game that is so famous with the original story sort of gets lost because the character isn't up there in the intellect level instead he's just screaming left and right especially that funny ass scene where he meets uh, ryuk for the first time and by the way that is the movie's only saving grace willem dafoe is an amazing uh, version of ryuk i really enjoyed his version and it was just perfect in my opinion it, it was literally watching the show or the uh, reading the manga come to life when it came to him the rest of the characters uh, this this movie felt more like i was watching a 90s movie that sort of mentality where we take these uh anime bombastic animation things and and, and try and and do like slapstick over the top adaptations and it doesn't work it i don't know i think they could have done so much better if they would have just stripped it down to the bare necessities and you'd have could have gone with an intellectual route on violence in america just the different values and the way people go about their daily daily lives over here i think it would have been a very interesting take with the character of l if you wanted to do l i don't know or doing that hunting for this killer with this mysterious artifact known as the death note 
it was just a mess the music was forgettable everything about it was super bland uh as for the ghost in the shell movie man it was just boring um look i was a fan from the beginning i didn't mind scarlett johansson yes i understand the whitewashing uh thingamajig that everybody was so upset about i don't not gonna talk about that what i didn't mind is that the story lends itself to the idea of having actors playing other characters simply because of the nature of the story and the the fact that they're using robots and you know the ghost and the shell are two separate things and the shell can be interchangeable i really like the idea and thought it was a very interesting thing to explore in a live action medium the movie looks incredible i really like the uh, cinematography and the special effects and all that stuff it looks great and unfortunately the completionist in me had to get it i have the manga i have the anime i had to get the live action movie sue me it's in there somewhere but um, if it's to your comfort i did get it from a third party market dealer the movie's just boring man part of what made the manga such a classic same with the animated movie the animated tv shows and all that stuff is that social political commentary that smart manga that i love so much and that just sort of gets stripped down to the bare bones it's a very dull and lifeless experience watching this movie and i think like your whole cast you could have gotten more lively people or at least have them speak uh, Japanese I, I kind of wanted to see the movie subtitled <laughs> practically I don't know I was I was let down simply because the movie doesn't really do much yeah it's adapting uh, mostly the laughing man and the original 1994 um, I want to say 94 uh, movie with concepts of the uh, original manga but hopefully in the future we can get a reboot and do like a standalone complex adaptation that I would go for with the proper production and whatnot I don't know what do you guys think <laughs> do you hate these adaptations i would like to think so uh based on all the comments i see online hopefully the next batch of anime adaptations because you know they're coming they're gonna take a while but they're coming uh we've got uh battle angel alita and uh, while i'm not a huge fan of that i'm still gonna watch it simply out of curiosity and maybe it piques my interest and i want to go and read the manga i don't know but there's gonna be more but i think if you want adaptations to survive you're gonna have to find a way to get past the visual aesthetic and worry more about the plot because if you look at the track record dragon ball is super complicated to adapt for like 90 minutes or 60 70 minutes or whatever the hell that movie was you've got speed racer which is pretty hokey you know it's it's a classic for some people but it's a little dated compared to uh, nowadays and they're just picking these movies that I, I think i've said it before you should pick stuff that's a little bit more contemporary and a little bit easier with uh, more western sensibilities uh, you know a cowboy bebop of the world i'm not saying you should adapt it but a cowboy bebop of the world could fare better than say uh, a one piece adaptation because i do know they want to make a tv show out of it anime i think shouldn't be exploited like comic book and other mediums have it's very you know it's 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 its own thing that's what i'm trying to get at i don't know if you could have an anime adaptation what would it be let me know down below i'm very interested in reading what you guys uh, think that's my quote unquote apology for these disastrous movies guys thank you for uh in this case listening to another installment of a week in geekdom here on youtube as always like comment and subscribe and follow me on your favorite social media platform i've gotta go i will catch all of you on our next episode Oh, 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 oh,